This, it means that if you read this comment, yeah, I'm leaving it, but please don't use it. Because yeah, everybody was afraid of like, you know, everybody had like bomb bombs like programmed to each other on coordinates just like on the phone. And that was kind of the joke. But it's kind of the start of, uh, of let's say, geocoding web content. Um, and that's how, and we still have the oldest thing of the GeoWeb is the uh, ICBM tag. And ICBM stands for Intercontinental Ballistic Missile. That's why it comes from. If you ever wondered what that tag is all about. Uh, and that's actually a, a, a net tag that allows you to go code a web page. It's also called uh, um, Geo URL. Some of uh, you might know it. So it's basically pretty simple. In the header of your HTML page, you add this meta tag, and that means this page. Um, well, it's not. And the semantics is not really clear if it's uh, if the content is about that or if the content has been created there. But at least uh, the idea is with blocks, as you might know, there is a few uh, block maps in Switzerland. I hope the web works. Wednesday, it does work. Yep. Like these are Swiss bloggers, you probably know that map, but there are other maps which do the same thing. Which, and these blogs basically <coughs> have that kind of meta tag in their template, and that's how they end up on that map. Because the crawler is reading all feeds, is getting the, is getting the, the geo URL, or this missile tag, and, uh, and so they end up on the map. So it's basically the, 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 one of the like, simple uh, geo web examples uh, having web pages just tagged with the URL, uh, with the coordinate, and that's it. And uh, yeah, so but of course there's uh, uh, there's more to that than uh, than simple pointing HTML files to uh, coordinates. Uh, we well, like the, the idea of the, the geo web is more that. As, as soon as you put information into the context of location, people are getting amazed about, like, you usually know all the, the people around you. And, well, you might read some bloggers and you might need some information from people who are just living like, on the other side of the globe. But you still, you don't really get the feeling of where are these, where are these people or what are these people, like, what they, do they do? And, uh, well, you might also know that one, that example, but it, it's just virtualizes or visualizes um, if it loads, I hope it does. Um, so if you oops, yeah, here we go. Like Twitter region, if you it, it was surprised I, I met the guy who did it, uh, David and David Shore. And the the thing is it was so so easy to do. But it blows up so much people if, if you just show that demo that people around the world are just twittering and you just see the globe where it happened. Although it's, it's absolutely a, a simple example, so it's not really, it's not really a, a rocket science here. It still surprises people that how does, if we put information into a geo context, it, it's, it amazes us. If you put stuff, stuff on maps, it, it, it gives you a completely different context as if you just see the text. And, and that's, that's what basically the GeoWeb is all about. Putting information or making it easy for people to put information into a given context and therefore aggregate them and making yeah, more value out of it based on, on having this in a geo context. One of the things that evolved out of this, this tag, which was the, basically the early uh, agreement on how to tag a page or this geo URL, is geo RSS. Um, the RSS, I guess it's all known to you, how that works, feeds. And basically, geo RSS is nothing else than putting geo coordinates into the feed. It's uh, the rocket science here, it's you have your RSS your channel, your item, and you can either put it into the channel the tag or you can put it into the item. So it's either you block the whole feed as being blocked there or 
you put every item. Like if you're a travel blogger and you're traveling, you can basically, wherever you block to a post, you can add the coordinates where you block the post. So people will then be able to follow you where you are based on, uh, well, if you plot that on a map or if you use other services. So, as with all GR, uh, RSS standards, there's always multiple flavors. I guess you know that, Atom, RSS, 0 0.9, 2.0, whatever. <coughs> uh, it's the same thing with GeoRSS, there's three different flavors of GeoRSS. There's also a uh, you can also add it to Atom, so it's not just restricted to RSS. There's the standard uh, GeoPoint, which is not that well supported by I'm not sure. This is example you see here is the simple encoding, which is basically you add a point, and there's the GML profile where you can add complex objects like routes, polygons, and much more complex stuff into the RSS so that the map is better visualized than just a point. So one probably uh, where the biggest producer of GeoRSS right now is Flickr. Uh, you have if you scroll down, you have a little thing here, it's called... Oh, <coughs> What's up with the beam, by the way? <laughs> it flickers. Yeah. It was fine up to now. It's fine up to now, okay. Yeah. Sorry for that. I'm trying to connect. See if that... And if you install that, 
and basically it enhances your uh, UI with uh, possibilities to post, uh, to add coordinates. It makes it easy to add a map to your blog post because basically it just adds additional information to your blog. And uh, so your readers can be very close to you, like the result here, like, uh, you can, or they can closely follow you where you are in case you post a real coordinate where you actually need uh, it's certainly interesting for um, like travel bloggers, people who are traveling around a lot, or uh, just the, like this guy here. What he's doing is basically has on top of his blog, well, he's blogging all kinds of stuff, but on top of his blog, he has a map just in the, in the foot. And basically, all these entries at the end end up creating this map on top. Like when he's blogging, he basically creates his map. That's not done with GeoPress. That's he's done that on his own. It's some JavaScript hacking on the on Google API. And uh, it's actually a pretty good example if you if you like, if you're really traveling around, being a traveling salesman or being being like a, an adventurous. And uh, so. And, it, it, it kind of gives you a, a, another like spin to, to blogging than just text. Well, there's uh, like from the feed, there's some more uh, emerging uh, standards or ways of, of, of geo tagging something. And um, one of the also let's say getting famous not yet that much used is uh, possibly to use microformats as uh, you can code stuff so just in a just somewhere in the HTML code you can just add a class specific classes with specific names and based on these classes tool, tools or search engines can figure out uh, where this information was created you can just add class geo then a class latitude longitude you add the coordinates and, uh, and then the, the, the tool can use it. Uh, this also can be integrated into address, H cards, H column, or whatever uh, um, microphones you're creating, which are, of course, richer semantics than just. Uh, what do I say? Richer semantics than just. A point. Uh, so uh, on on my blog, like one example is I put in the coordinates here where I live, which is not that interesting. But anyway, what, what they are tagged is this kind of geo tag, and as soon as you have uh, operator installed, you might know that it's a Firefox extension that reads microphones. It might someday going to be integrated into Firefox by default, which means that as soon as a web page is semantically tagged with certain information being in addresses, at events, or like in this case, um, a geo a position, you will be able to have this location tag and it tells me, ah, oh, okay, and uh, I can now find that point on, on Google Maps, which is nothing else, or no secret here, it just transforms the, uh, the URL, it creates Google Maps, and then yeah, you see where I live. Uh, Geotags are today also used by, by a lot of uh, photo sites, which you, if you upload your uh, pictures, they, they, they create this kind of uh, uh, geotags. There's not, like, there's no standard called geotag. It's, 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 there's a microphone geotag that you see here, which is kind of defined, because at least there's a page where there's a spec about it. And there's a lot of other people who say they create geotags, Although this is not kind of, there's no common understanding of how this geotags really should look like. I really hope that this is going to change. People are going to adapt to a certain way so that we can, and that's the interesting part, start to aggregate this information. And not just for personal use, but also on the like, search engine basis. And that's uh, where some other standards are coming in. Um, in the past, uh, we've been. Uh, I've been, I've been explaining how, how can we bring the, like, the primitive world of the web, like in HTML, into this geo thing by just adding some geo positions all over the place, being in feeds or the web page itself. Now, there's from the other side, 
from the more geo specific formats, you might know this whole uh, mapping um, geospatial topic has some very, very complex standards. Like from the past, those people who have been very like, crafting maps, and, uh, they have very complex geo standards. And from the other side, it's basically there's two components right now. It's not yet clear which one's going to win the race, although they tell them that they complement each other. But it's still, we have to probably agree on, on one common format to, to, to use. One thing is the KML. It's not famous with the Google Maps, uh, Google Earth, or Keyhole being bought by Google and now just distributing that for free. So that's why uh, KML gets big. And the GML comes more from the traditional geo world. And these are XML standards. They, by default, have no visual presentation. So it's not HTML that presents itself. It's basically only semantic geodata that can be plotted on a map. Like if you, if you know uh, Google Earth, you can load all kinds of uh, uh, tiles and feeds and there's this place that um, we can show that and lay on it if you want to, if you don't know. But one of the uh, very important thing is that, well, one thing is having all this information created for yourself, but how about aggregating them. So I think one of the companies that were very early on the race is, is Google, I think the others will follow, is that beside the web index, trying to index like everything that is on the web, which Google, Yahoo, Microsoft, a lot of other stuff here, um, there's like how, could, how can you get all these geo-related information together? I think we're here at the really start. And Google has started by, by indexing all this geo-related content by if you have a sitemap map XML, just add your geo RSS or KML files that you have produced, and Google will index them and will show them on the map. So if you are here in Google Maps and you search for pizza in San Francisco, the why do they always look for pizza? I don't know, this is my, this is my default thing. <laughs> um, then you see that these are the entries from Google itself, so no surprise here. But you have a, a, a small thing, it's called community maps here. Dad. Community maps, this thing here. And if you uh, click on that, it basically searches the GeoWeb index. Now, everything that they have been collected that has some geo coordinates tag on it. And you see here, there's a, web co a website called, uh, not, not, no way to spell that, Flickr, of course, um, some other websites, and they, they sometimes you see the format is what they do here. That's mostly all Google resources, but still. It, it, this is from MyMaps, most of the results are from, from the MyMaps feature, but if you search in Zero, Which Google doesn't have any official data, it's not yet. Um, you uh, see like KML files, okay, and Z, but it's uh, okay, KML files that they're indexing and trying to plot on the map. So it's basically, uh, this is like the GeoWeb index they've been crawling together. If you look at the search result, um, you feel like Alta Vista in um, uh, the, like the old days. So, what I want to say with that is, there's a lot of questions which are unsolved with how to rank geo content, how to get to it, how to index it. I think there's a lot of potential for innovation in that space. Um, of course, Google is uh, um, trying to innovate there, hopefully others too. I think there's a lot of um, uh, possibilities also for startups in that section that you can try to make sense out of that information in your context and the index that. So the, the main topic is how you rank it. And I tell you, HRAM doesn't help you. So it's, it's, it's just different. The world is different. You have, to, you have to come up with different algorithms to organize your information in order to rank them, have good quality content. Right now, if you look, just try and do some searches on that community map thing, 
it's just a lot of bullshit. So how do you come up with the real good content? And I'm sure there is really good content somewhere in that index. But how do you bring that to the first five rounds? And if you solve that problem, it's going to be next. So there's of course something more than just like it's, it's easy if, if information attack the coordinates. Yeah. But I mean, how do you like? If, there's a lot of information today that there has to be, there's no coordinates on it. So you have to figure out how you put coordinates on this information just by reading and figuring out the semantics. Well, you say it's easy, you get for names, search for Zurich, oh, there's a crazy street name, Gale called that, there's a field coding service, and that's it. So I, I can just tell you that's not how it's going to work out. You need to have a much cleverer geo base that you can compare your information with in order to really figure out where is that information is happening. Or well, most of the time, maybe this information is happening in multiple places. You have to place the same information multiple times in the map. Because there's like, the original thing, the crime map, which is probably easy because crimes usually happen only at one place. So I'm trying to figure out that police reports do have street names and, and all kinds of other things, so it's pretty easy to figure out the relocation of that. But there's much more complex uh, uh, data to, to uh, okay. There's a few companies who are already doing a pretty good job on these topics. They, they just are uh, doing all kinds of news and trying to figure out where this news happens. And they already started to build a pretty massive uh, geo-reference base in order to figure out uh, what, where an article could have been written. So one thing is they started to associate names with the region. They have names of politi political guys, they have got, uh, of, of like police officers, of, of firemen, or of all kinds of names which they know, okay, they figured out that this name is located that, that this name is part of that location. So if they see that name comes up together with that location, they are more sure that this actually happened here. So you have to make yourself a network of information where you should have a good quality and you should know that there that are this kind of spot and then you kind of can put more information into that or like can associate information to that location. And I think that's a, a, a pretty interesting. Now um, that's my last slide. How about, uh, what, what's the future? I mean, where, where are we going with it? I mean, today we have this whole GPS, geocoding photos. I mean, I don't know, three years ago, that was just, well, four years ago, it was just rocket science. Today, today you have tools like this, which tracks you wherever you are. And at the end of the day, you just have your log, where, wherever you, like, was. Well, it doesn't work here in the house, because GPS doesn't work uh, in, the, in the house. Or you have your phone that has GPS on it, you do a picture, it's automatically geocoded. So there's, there's a lot of stuff that is happening today. And I think geo-aware tools, like tools that help you to, to, to geocode it, uh, will emerge and will make it much easier for us to, to put content into this kind of geo web without just figuring out the coordinates and, and making it too hard. Another thing that we will see is, right now we always think in points. I was talking a lot about the geo point. But I think after we figure out how do we handle points into it, we're going to have, have to handle polygons. Like information are not just happening on a point, they're happening on an area. Being a kind of, uh, I don't know, that, that they, they're, this is the kind of problem. You pinpoint the information to a point, and that's just not enough for if you want to get relevance. Because relevance is always depending on the, the, the space this information is talking about. And I think, the next evolution then, after we figure out how to do the points, we're going to figure out how to do polygons, or how we can do arrays, how do we handle that, which is multitudes more complex. That's it. Non-visionary question. You're walking in here. How do you get your um, geo-coordinates? What's for you now the easiest way to find the geo-coordinates where you stand now? Now I use places, <laughs> and hopefully somebody can it correctly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, places here. You might know places, yeah. which helps you do uh, uh, in, which do some, at least some geo coding. And if you have to do it on your own, yeah. and, and based on that, you you basically do that. So you automatically get the place where you are in here. Yes. 
and you can import that to whatever you're using as a software to work. Yeah, this this is yeah this is where it comes together. Like right now, it's still we have this we have different possibilities how to get uh, uh, coordinates. And one thing is is uh, well this whole GPF thing. We have this other like this is when you are like on the road and you have a GPS and you're outside. That works fine. One thing is obviously looking up the coordinates in the map, like GPS to land and using this service. Or any other, like you just have to like, uh, search for a point. And, and you then afterwards, like you pinpoint your map, and that here you have the coordinate. You just copy paste it if you found the plot. Or, and you have to communities like places that geo coordinates Wi Fi and hotspots, like this Wi Fi spot here. And then you get the coordinates in there. But of course, there's no tool that really brings them all together right now. So it's, it's still, yeah. I mean, there's, there's a lot of space for innovation here. You can, you can create tools that do that. So I think GeoPress is one of the first that actually started uh, doing this kind of blogging integration. But I think there's, there's, there's a lot of space for a lot of tools that can be created that brings all these possible geo sources, uh, location sources that we have today because you're not going to end up with one, I guess, because of different technologies that we use. So there, there is a very nice uh, use monkey script for uh, blogger.com bloggers where you can put like uh, the, the, the annotation of Google Maps where you put street, city, uh, country and it generates automatically um, the um, geo uh, the, the 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 microphone yeah, for the blog okay. post. Okay, yeah, the script uh, is kind of local fiddling around with your website to, to help you to, to get the, the coordinates more easier than like having three tools open and copy pasting the coordinates.
and it's just technically that just works with Yahoo Maps at the moment. Or yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't work with Google, Google Maps, Maps or any it's other it's mapping a, it's service. It's a hack that, that you can get the coordinates from multiple sources, <coughs> and, and you put them, and then you again distribute that to multiple webs. Okay. But I guess we have to. This is just basically a showcase to explain to people, mm -hmm. guys, we need to put that as a standard into the browser, and then it's much easier. But of course, we are just years away from that. I mean, people just get the uh, whole microphone.